Here's a nice number theory problem that's appeared in a couple of different places. I found it in a mathematics Olympiad from Belarus. So let's see what we've got. Our goal is to prove for all natural numbers A, there are infinitely many natural numbers N, such that the number A to the two to the N plus two to the N is not prime. And I think maybe the motivation behind the writing of this problem are the so-called Fermat primes. And that says if one plus two to the N, so in other words, the case when A is equal to one is prime, then N equals two to the K. So N is a power of two. And like I said, those are called Fermat primes. And I think kind of this is showing up a couple of different places here, this two to the N here, as well as the fact that we have something plus two to the N. So that being said, I think constructing infinitely many composite numbers here doesn't really follow the same proof as showing this Fermat prime rule, but that being said, I think that's an interesting link. Okay, so maybe how can we do this? Well, I would like to notice that if both of these are perfect squares, we have a little bit to work with. So I'll just say that. So if a to the two to the n is a perfect square, so in other words, it's x squared, and two to the n is a perfect square, so in other words, it's y squared, then our object, which is a to the two to the n plus two to the n is equal to x squared plus y squared. There's not an obvious way to factor that at the moment, but if we rewrite it as follows, we'll have something to work with. And how will we rewrite it? Let's rewrite it as x plus y squared, but that introduces a two times x times y, so minus two xy, so something like that. So now let's notice here we've got a perfect square, x plus y squared. So maybe I'll just call this a, so this term is a squared. But now if we can somehow pick an n so that this is also a perfect square, I'll call this b squared, then we can indeed factor this. And this factors from the difference of squares factorization formula. So a squared, sorry, a minus b, times a plus b, and if the possible n value that makes that happen is a family of n values, then we found infinitely many such n values. Okay, so let's see how we can get going with that. Well, let's first notice that from this rule right here, the fact that two to the n is a perfect square, that tells us that n must be even. So I'll say that n is equal to, let's say maybe two times k. It has to be an even number. That's again for that thing to be a perfect square. Okay, so but in that case, our object, which I'll write again, a to the two to the n plus two to the n, now looks like, well, let's see. It will look like a to the two to the n minus one, but notice that n is two to the k. So it's gonna be this squared. And then plus, let's see, two to the k quantity squared. Okay, so again, that's just rewriting it kind of as this x squared plus y squared. So our number x will be this number right here and our number y is this number right here within the parentheses. Okay, so we've got x and we have y. Okay, but then using this trick over here, we see that that's gonna be x plus y squared, so that's gonna be a to the two to the two k minus one uh, plus two to the k quantity squared and then minus two x y. So that's gonna be minus two to the k plus one, so that's like two y times x, which is a to the two to the two k minus one. So again, like I've been saying, we want this to be a perfect square. But this a to the two to the k minus one is a perfect square as long as k is large enough. It doesn't even have to be that big. That's gonna be a perfect square for all k bigger than or equal to one, I think. 
So all we need is for this to be a perfect square, but this is a perfect square if and only if k plus one is even. But if k plus one is even, that means k is odd. So we can write k as 2m plus one, but then all the way back into n, that means that n is equal to 4m plus two. So m is congruent to two mod four, if you'd like that. But now let's see what x and y are in this case. So x squared will be this. But if x squared is this, then x will be equal to a to the 2 to the 4m plus 1. Now notice if we square that, we get a to the 2 to the 4m plus 2, which is a to the 2n. Okay, that's good. And then y, let's see what that will be. Well, so y is just... Let's see, two to the n over two, so that's gonna be equal to two to the two m plus one. Okay, so now we see what x and y are, and we can easily write down this sort of rewriting from this step right here. Okay, so let's do that. So now we have a to the two to the n plus two to the n will be equal to, I'll just jump to this step right here, so x plus y, that'll be a to the two to the four m plus one, and then plus two to the two m plus one, like that. And then we'll have minus two times x times y, but that'll be minus two to the two m plus two times a to the two, to the 4m plus 1, like that. Okay, nice. Oh yeah, and I forgot my square here. Okay, now we can finally factor that as a difference of squares and, that, and then we're done. So just to be careful, let's see what this is as a perfect square. This will be 2 to the 2m plus 1 and then a to the 2 to the 4m quantity squared. So that's that guy right there. So that allows us to kind of write it a little bit more easily. So let's see. Now this is going to factor, like I said, as a minus b times a plus b, the capital A and b. So we have a to the 2 to the 4m plus 1 plus 2 to the 2m plus 1 minus 2 to the 2m plus 1 and then a to the 2 to the 4m. So that's like our capital A minus capital B. And then times, well, the same thing with a plus there. So let's write that down. And now we have our factorization for this object. But this is actually maybe a little bit worrying. And I say that because notice if A is equal to one, this part like simplifies down just to the number one. And we in fact do not have a trivial or we do not have a non-trivial factorization. But this is a non-trivial factorization as long as a is not equal to one. So let's just write that down so we're done if a is bigger than or equal to two. So that means all that's left to check is the case when a is equal to one. But we can use this fact from number theory over here. So if a is equal to one, then this object is prime only when n equals 2 to the k, but there are infinitely many such n that are not 2 to the k. You could just take all of the odd values of n, and then we've solved it in the a equals 1 case. Okay, so all of this kind of big calculation works when a is not equal to 1, and then this quick fact over here, or you could maybe do it on its own, works when a is equal to 1, and that's a good place to stop.